Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a scenario in which the British Empire came back in 2023. So we, here we have at least what I think is the entirety of the British Empire. I did do it by memory, so if I missed one country, go ahead and let me know. But I think I got them all. So let's go ahead and begin their expansion with the annexation of Iceland and Greenland. Two pretty weak territories that can help them connect up better with Canada. <coughs> From there, they continue to annex the weakest countries surrounding them, including Suriname. Yeah, these are just countries that they're just downright annexing without even declaring war. These countries have either completely given up. Well, yeah, they've just completely given up. They then go ahead and push into Africa, declaring war on Ivory Coast, Liberia, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, um, Burkina Faso, Togo, and Benin. Which, honestly, this empire is incredibly powerful. This is not going to be an issue for them. They push into all of these countries until... Yeah, they all just... They all fall. They all fall. And they are all annexed completely by the British. <coughs> In real life, they would probably be the second strongest country right behind the USA. But we're going to try and expand them into becoming the first. And the most powerful, the most, the richest, by economy, not by GDP per capita, just by regular GDP. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that for them. Expanding into Africa is going to give them the population, but they're already number one, so I don't know what else they need. When it comes to economy, I'd say they're right behind the USA in second. When it comes to population, they're in first. When it comes to land, they're in first. When it comes to military, honestly, I gotta give them first for sheer manpower. For sheer manpower. Next up, they go and declare war on Guatemala, Honduras, um, El Salvador, Nicaragua. They actually refrain from declaring war on Costa Rica or Panama, as that might get the USA involved. But they do declare war on Cuba and on Haiti and the Dominican Republic, along with quite a few of these other. Wait, no, not Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico still counts as U.S., so they'd probably get, go to war with the U.S. if they went to war with Puerto, Puerto Rico. Also, a bunch of these random islands. Not going to be the most difficult for them. They in breeze into Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Suriname. Make a landing in Cuba and push across the island. Honestly, the British here are taking what they want when they want it. They are incredibly powerful here. Like I said, military-wise, I'd even put them above the U.S. in some scales. Just the sheer amount of land and manpower they have. Yeah. Economy-wise, they're quickly catching up, though. They're very quickly catching up. With that, though, the U.K. now is a good hold in the Americas and decides to continue to expand over here in Africa. So they declare war in Mozambique. But something they didn't expect was for this to activate a small alliance over here with the DRC, Angola, um, Cameroon, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Niger, Mali, and Mauritania. Pretty much the- oh, and Libya. This is the African alliance to try and stop the UK. And we actually see a few other countries join in, such as Gabon, the Congo, the Central African Republic, Chad, um, Somalia, and Djibouti along with Algeria and yeah just the majority of Africa gonna be the UK's hardest war yet but there's nothing the UK can't do here and they're gonna win it in the end with that they quickly send troops into Mozambique capturing the entirety of the country up into Angola and into the DRC this is where a lot of their divisions are so it's going very well although they also have a lot um, positioned up here in Egypt which begin to push into Libya, capturing the entirety of the coast and all of the important land. With that though, UK troops can't be everywhere at once, and the blue team managing, actually manages to cut the UK into two, and begin to push back from Ethiopia along with capturing all of Somalia land, and pushing into Burkina Faso, etc. As for where the UK troops are, well, they're still up here in Egypt, slowly pushing down as they capture all of Eritrea. And honestly, it's just gonna be where the UK troops are, if, uh, like judging how much land they have here. 
They start to retake a lot of their land over here in the South Sudan region until eventually they reconnect their two parts and cut off the Africans into two. From there, they see a lot of success pushing up into the DRC as they manage to meet up with their Nigerian forces and cut the blue team into a further two pieces, pushing down, as I said, heavily into the DRC occupied area, well, where the DRC is the main power. And yeah, the entire region capitulates. This is just absolutely showing the world the sheer military might of this new um, UK empire. It's probably stronger than the Romans and the Mongols. It's gotta be the strongest one I've done yet and the strongest one that there is. They also push into the Horn of Africa, capturing Ethiopia and capitulating the entire region. <coughs> they then push the blue team completely out of their land <coughs> and begin to push up into any important parts of Mali and Niger, whilst also making landings in Algeria and pushing over here to the coast of Mauritania. With that, this is all just desert left, causing the surrender of all these nations. <clears throat> and the annexation of every single one of them into the British Empire. By far putting them up there and first by economy. Actually, maybe not. These are some poor countries, but most likely, yes. There are few African countries left who haven't been annexed by the British, but holy crap, they have a majority of Africa under their control. They have almost a full continent. The rest of these countries join a new world global, like global defense pact being led by the USA. Originally, it was only meant to be for the US's allies in the West, but after seeing all of these Africans dying to the UK, they decide to let anyone in almost at all. There are obviously a few countries that they won't let in, but most countries, they'll make some kind of like exception if they're in any particular danger from the UK. Yeah, with that, UK is definitely stronger than the US now. Uh, Economy-wise, it would actually probably be pretty close, which if, to, which if you look at land area or population might seem kind of weird, but the US's economy is very, very large. And the UK controls a lot of Africa, which no offense to anyone who might be from Africa, but it is the poorest country that's just, I mean, continent, the poorest continent. That's just like a fact. And it'll give them, like if Africa, if the entire continent united in real life, its economy would like barely beat out Germany and maybe Japan from all of the countries combined. But yeah, that's giving the British a huge hold over here and a lot of influence in the world as they hold a lot of the world's resources. And why not get some more? As Saudi Arabia joins the global pact, but Iran doesn't, as they are trying to start their own one with China. They're just a bit too late though, as um, the UK declares war, along with any other country here around the Middle East area that hasn't joined an alliance yet. Which doesn't include all of them. Yeah, that's gonna hurt to say the least. Honestly, the UK is just pushing into anyone who hasn't joined the Alliance, threatening people to join the Alliance even more. They begin to push into Iran, capturing the majority of the country. Yes, I know, mountains, deserts. This is the UK, this is the frickin' UK empire we're talking about here. Like, I don't think a few like countries does it's not going to stop them in real life. The UK actually did fail to invade Afghanistan once, though. So yeah, probably wouldn't happen again, though. Here they are investing heavily into their military. With that, our on is gone. And the UK's official military spending, not just their military strength, but military spending, goes above the US's. Yeah. This thing is one military behemoth. They could take on any one country in the world, including the US at this point. In the beginning, maybe I would have given it to the US, but with all this new expansion, definitely gotta give it to the UK. With that, China and Russia make their own alliance to protect from the UK, 
as obviously they're not going to join the U.S.'s alliance. They're just two different of countries. Even against a threat like this, I don't think the world could unite into one. It's kind of sad, but <clears throat> I guess some people are just too different to get along. Eh, it's just the world. Nothing you can really do about it. But yeah, the UK. Wow. Huge country here. Pretty much all of Europe has joined, so there's nothing they can do there. And over here in South America, and North America, pretty much every country has joined. Most countries in the world have now joined an alliance. Is this the end of the UK Empire? No, it's not. Because you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna do something crazy which most people would call stupid. They declare war on China, and with that activate the Chinese alliance. Yeah. Some people would call them stupid, some people would call them a genius. Up to you to interpret it, but that's a good portion of the world you just declared war on there. UK, you sure you're good with this? You sure you can win this? Well, the UK is not planning to take every square inch of the land. They're just planning to push in as much as they can, as fast as they can, especially into Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, push up into Armenia, and along the Caspian Sea into Russia. They push over here into Xinjiang, and into China, and down here into Laos and Cambodia. So yeah, the UK is just pushing out as much as they can, as fast as they can, to just try and get a good peace treaty out of this before any of the alliances grow too much. We actually see a few things changing around here. Pretty much every country now joins the US's alliance as they see Russia's and China's absolutely collapsing. So actually, the majority of the world is now demo got democratic. At least the majority of the world that isn't dying. Moscow is captured along with whatever's left of Russia, all of their important land at least. And yeah, Beijing is captured, leading to China being cut off from whatever's left of Russia, which surrenders. North Korea is absolutely destroyed. And after being cut off, Tibet is also captured. With that, China falls. And holy crap. The UK just defeated the East. <coughs> But in doing so, they made themselves so many enemies, I don't think they could beat the other alliance. It's too big. It's too big. It consists of all that's left of Europe. Literally. Every country that's left here in Europe is in that alliance. Every other country left in the Americas. Oceania. Every country left here in the world. I just don't know if they could deal with that. Especially considering that they're already having problems... Well, of course they're having problems. They would have died almost instantly. And she's in India, in all of their empire from people rising up and not wanting to be in it. But yeah, no. The UK makes the mistake of not fully annexing Russia, which means that what's left decides to turn democratic. And in an odd turn, like in a weird turn of events, what's left of the Russian government pleads to the USA to let them into their alliance. So yeah, kind of ironic, but it's whatever's left of China and Russia, it's not much. With that though, the UK is officially seen as the sole global superpower with the USA in second, and they've expanded wherever they can. As I said, this one alliance that's left, the US's, it's too powerful for them, I don't think they could beat it. They could be any one, two, or even three countries alone. But an alliance made up of every strong country left in the world is too much for them. So yeah, let's look at this final peace treaty. And we have definitely made the most powerful empire yet. They have sneaked around and made themselves such a powerful colonial empire. In real life, they probably would go for Europe, but sadly for them, Europe was already in NATO, which was the alliance that expanded into this new world pact, which means that they couldn't really go after them because they were already in an alliance that the UK couldn't beat. But, like, yeah. Exp 
expanded very heavily here. Okay, yeah, let's, uh, nope. Just finish coloring in these new borders. And holy crap, are we gonna have an umpire and a half here? Honestly though, I think they'd have enough natural resources to be fully self-sufficient. So even if the rest of the world does cut them off from all world trade, which I'm sure they would, they'd be fine. Alright, oh, also they do annex Armenia. Alright, let's finish coloring this in. And holy crap, has the UK made an umpire in real life? They already had the largest to ever exist. And here they've done nothing but make that empire larger. So yeah, same as with ev pretty much every other empire. Their only limit was when they ran out of countries that weren't in the great, like, alliance of the video. Wow. Well, I do hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.